Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Allen Temple Sunday morning praise and worship service. I don't know about you, as always, I am so glad to be in the house of the Lord. It's raining outside today, that's why we're inside, but do you know those are rain that blooms, uh, that makes blooms, so we, we, incur we love this rain right now, we need it because it's been so hot. So I don't know about you, are you glad that the Lord touched you this morning? Are you glad that the Lord allowed you to get up this morning and give him praise? I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad that he stopped by my house and touched me this morning, amen. Will you please stand for our morning hymn? Our morning hymn will be found in uh, hymn number 513 in the blue, red and blue hymnal and hymn number 404 in the yellow. Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Without any further aligning, let us all, as always, lift our mighty voices to an almighty God. Time is filled with swift transition. Not a birth unmoved can stand. Unchanging hand, you've got the hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand, build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Hold 
into his hand. And we would ask the Reverend Finley Carter to come and lead us in our invocation. unchanging hand. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning with humble hearts just to say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us through this past week. Even though some of us had ups and downs. Yes, sir. But we know, Lord, that you were there. That's right. Because you said you would not leave us That's right. nor forsake us. That's what he said. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for those that are coming, those wish to be here, but yet they can't right. for one of the reasons. So, Heavenly Father, we just say thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. Bless us, bless our families far and near. Be with us. We don't forget to give you honor and glory, Lord. But we said that we would always trust in you. So Heavenly Father, we're gonna put all our trust in you, all our faith in you. And we won't forget to give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. He 
is my shepherd <laughs> and he's my guide. All through the night, yeah. All through the day, I know the Lord keeps sending blessings my way. Blessings my way, yeah. Blessings my way, I know the Lord keeps sending blessings my way. He's blessing me now. He's doing it right now. Come on. church said amen. Any blessed folk there today? Yeah. I just want to in our haste last week I forgot to call on some people who were so I had already given them previous permission to be able to address the congregation. So Terry you can come on come now and if Donna, you are prepared. You can come after him. All right? Put your hands together for my friends. Good morning, Ala Tempo. As usual, I will not be here very long, but I simply wanted to give you an overview of what it is to be an usher in the house of the Lord. I've been an usher my entire life, so that's 57 years. My mother, for 91 years, and my grandfather and great-grandfather before that. So I will tell you three things that are very important. I'll leave you with these three thoughts. Hopefully they will press on your heart and they will get you to join us in the army of the Lord. We are the first face that you see when you enter the house of the Lord. One of the most important things that we do is we are a servant. We have accepted the call, very much like Reverend and the rest of the clergy team to be the beacons and the persons that hold that lamp that keeps it dim and burning so that when you come in, you feel the spirit, you see the spirit, and then you envelop the spirit. The next thing is, as that vessel and that servant that we were talking about, is that we have a special calling and mission to aid each and every one of you so that you find Jesus Christ before you get out of your car into the parking lot and into the church, and then when you leave and go the same way. Hopefully you will take that message with you as you go throughout your week and everything else that you do in your day-to-day -day lives. We are truly, truly doing the work of the Lord. We are the hands, the feet, the eyes, and the ears making a difference in every single sanctuary, church, mosque, and temple. Ushers usher you in, and they will also usher you out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Donna, Donna Robinson. I'm the pro tem for the steward board. And it's a, a wonderful opportunity once again to be in the house of the Lord, and I am so grateful to be here. But just quickly, I just want to say a couple of points, and then I'll take my seat as far as the steward board. Um, for those of you who may not know anything about the steward board, um, we're appointed by the pastor. And it's an annual appoint appointment. And although many have served on the steward board for years, it's still not a lifetime appointment. It is done annually by the pastor, and we are confirmed by the quarterly conference, just so you know how we uh, you know, get in place. Uh, where we conduct the business and the financial business of the church. That's, that's what we do. And we keep records, such as the baptisms and the, and the marriages, deaths, and um, uh, who's on probation, uh, members, and those kinds of things. And we keep up the uh, uh, church 
directory. But the important thing I just want to t uh, say to you all is that we're le leaders of the church, but we are servant leaders. We are serving our God. We are serving the direction of our pastor. We're serving this membership, this congregation, and we're serving the community. So praise be to God. I'm putting my other pro tem on the spot. I'm going to ask her to come up and talk about the trustee board. I want the record to show. I want the record to show that in the history of Allen Temple, only one pastor has ever appointed two women to be pro tem of the trustee board and the steward board. And that pastor's name is Alphonse Alexander. Good morning, Allen Temple. I'm most of you know that I'm Gwen Wilder, and I am the pro tem for the trustees. The trustees um, are elected. Uh, the, they, we put in our names. You make a decision if you'd like to be a trustee. So if any of you would like to be a trustee, you let the Reverend know and your name is, goes in and we are elected. There currently are 15 trustees on the board at this time. Um, we take care of the church, the building, and, and, the, and all the things that go on with keeping this building going and operating properly. Um, we then, if, we're, if they, we make a determination that something needs to be done, we send, we get bids, and we get three bids for any work that needs to be done in the church. And then that, um, those bids are sent to, we, we make a decision on which we would prefer of the three, and we send that to the steward board. Then the steward board, looks at that and makes a decision and then gets back to us and we get the work done. So um, we really uh, deal with the business of the building, the facility. Um, and if any of you, as I say, any of you are interested in joining either um, the trustee or the steward board, see Reverend and he will make that happen, possibly. We would love your suggestions, and we also want your suggestions even if you are not on, on either of the boards. If you have some issue that you'd like for us to look at, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you. I just want you to know she's threatening me. Some of y'all saw it too. Just in case we have to go to court. They did a good job. Put their hands together for them. Come on. Hey, listen, before I go any further, I, I know it is overcast and dreary out there, but this is the day that the Lord has made. I said this, this, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad. And aren't you glad he woke you up this morning? Clothed in your right mind, no matter what's going wrong in your life. You know that Jesus is still on the throne. I said it's a good day to give God some praise. All right. I just wanted to wake y'all up real quick. Amen. Very quickly, a couple of announcements. Vacation Bible School will be the week of the 25th um, through the 29th from 6 to 8.30. Um, uh, Miss Sarah Flack will be in the hallway for those who want to sign up for Vacation Bible School after service. Henry Daniels, a young man who passed away this past week from colon cancer, leaves behind a 36-year-old wife and a four-year-old daughter. We will have his funeral services here on Saturday, July the 23rd, beginning at 2 o'clock. His body will be flown back to Detroit, Michigan, where he's from to be with other family members. How many know death does not discriminate? I went to the doctor, Nate, this week and 
The doctor said to me when I walked out, all of your numbers agree. When I got in my car, I just started giving God praise, understanding that I could get a good report from the doctor and still fall dead. How many know you don't have to feel bad in order to die? The doctor's report that I want comes from heaven. It really doesn't deal with my physical health, but my faithfulness. Joy, one day I got to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you rule over many. Be praying for this young family. We pray for them today knowing that if we keep on living, we're going to have some heartache and pain and somebody going to pray for us in a few days. How many blessed people do we have in Allen Temple today? We ask that our ushers would come forth today. And maybe it's just me. I, I know I'm a senior citizen now, but is it dark in here? All right. Y'all might need that because of uh, your recording. But if you don't, please cut some more lights on in here because I, I can't see, see very well. Amen. They looking at me like they don't know what's going on. Oh, it's downstairs. All right. We're going we gonna to get somebody. We're going to get somebody to get all the lights on. Is that all right? All right, come on, choir. Good morning again, church. 
This morning's scripture will be found in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. That's Mark chapter 2 and verses 1 through 5. I'll be reading from the New International Version, and it reads, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. The word of God for the people of God. All praises be to God. You may be seated. Come on, come on. Like a ship that's off and driven. of life are raging Come on. and the fury falls on me the fury falls on me I wonder what I <laughs> Come on, come on That makes this race so hard to run The dead people so don't worry The Lord will make a way The Lord will make a way The Lord will make a way Somehow, somehow, somehow Like a ship that's tossed and driven Battered by an angry sea When the storms of life are raging And the fury falls on me The fury falls on me This race so hard to run. I said to the snow, the hurry. The Lord will make a way. The Lord will make a way. The Lord will make a way. Somehow, somehow, somehow. I to do my best in service. I choose to do the right thing. He was present on every hand. That's what he do. Come on. I wonder why. Good fortune always passes me by. But I said, it was so no worry. The Lord will make a way. The Lord will make a way. The Lord will make a way Somehow 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 The Lord will make a way 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 When life's 
Lord will make a way. The Lord will make a way. Somehow, somehow, somehow. Yeah. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, we've made our way to this worship experience. Because God, we believe in our hearts and in our souls that no matter what we're going through today, somehow, you'll make a way. I come standing now as the one you call not because I've been good and not because I've been holy but because of your mercy and your grace mm -hmm. but I stand to declare that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes use my head and my heart my mind and my mouth for your glory is my prayer and the people of God agree by shouting amen. amen. I love everybody that sings, I love everybody that plays. But I want you to know that Mr. Clyde Walker is one of my favorite. Yes, sir. If, if I'm right, if I'm right, I think Mr. Clyde, aren't you 93 years old? 94 years old. That's like, come on, put your hands together. That's a sharp 94 years old right there. Amen. Amen. When, when, I, when I grow up to be 94, I want to learn to sing just like that. If you can't stand, we ask that you would stand in respect for the word of God. Before we go any further, Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, I want you to raise your hand today. Yeah. Um, I want you to know you are the inspiration. Your family situation is the inspiration for today's service. Unbeknownst to you, Mr. Marshall, you gave me the title for today's sermon. Their son and daughter-in-law coming back from vacation. There was a car crash. The daughter-in-law is now deceased and the son was in very critical condition. But through many dangers, toils and snares, the Lord has brought him. One day, Homer, the brother, took steps after many days, months, and weeks of not being able to walk. Right then, George, the Lord gave me this word. Go with me real quick to Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. It says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered at the door that there was no room left, even outside or in the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came carrying a paralytic, carried by four. Since they could not get in to Jesus because of the crowd, they made the opening in the roof above Jesus. And after digging through it, Lord have mercy. They lowered the matter of the paralyzed man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can for sin, forgive sins but God alone? Immediately. Somebody say immediately. 
Jesus knew in his spirit this is what they were thinking in their heart and he said to them why are you thinking these things which is easier to say to the paralytic your sins are forgiven or get up take your mat and walk but that you may know that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic I tell you get up take your mat and go home he got up somebody shout he got up took his mat and walked out in the full view of all of them this amazed everyone and they praised God saying we have never seen anything like this you may be seated I want to preach from the subject I'm gonna preach till I get done today from the subject you can walk out of it yeah. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. So, oh, come on, I'm talking to your neighbor, say neighbor. Whatever it is, you can walk out of it. Yeah, it. Amen, amen. Saints of God, trial, tribulation, and trouble have a way of leaving you and me maladjusted. And most of us here today, we love God. And the truth is, we really do trust God. But the fact is, we need a boost in our confidence. How many of you know we need confidence today uh, that we're going to make it through? Uh, somebody today needs confidence that we're going to come out. Uh, somebody needs the confidence that racism and discrimination uh, is not going to keep us down forever. Uh, we need confidence today that we're loved. Uh, we need confidence today uh, that God is going to show us and take us to some possibilities uh, that are beyond where we are right now. Uh, we need confidence, some of us today, uh, that whatever has us held, uh, whatever has us bound, and whatever have us down, uh, we can walk out of it. Uh, listen, somebody, I don't care where life has you this morning. Uh, if you have faith in God uh, and confidence in yourself, uh, you can walk out of it. Uh, since today's story is about a man uh, in the ancient city of of Capernaum, which is the launching place and the headquarters of Jesus' ministry. Saints, after Jesus and his disciples had been on the road for a while, somebody had put out the word that Jesus was back in town and he was staying in a certain house. Now, some historians say that this house belonged to Jesus, but many of us have a problem with that because Jesus said uh, foxes have holes uh, the birds of the air have nests uh, but the son of man has no place uh, to lay his head uh, other theologians say uh, that the house that Jesus is in in this text uh, belonged to James and John uh, but regardless of who the house belonged to uh, Jesus is back in town and in a certain house uh, and there was a noise about the city uh, because Jesus was back home and saints in the text uh, there's a man who was paralyzed and in the need of healing and saints know this uh, paralysis is the loss of the ability to move and sometimes to feel anything in part or all of the body as a result of illness poison or injury saints uh, paralysis is the inability uh, to act or to function. Uh, saints, uh, when somebody is paralyzed, uh, the brain sends a signal uh, to that part of the body to move, uh, but the body does not respond uh, to the signal. Uh, and saints know this, uh, all paralysis uh, is not physical. Uh, oh, some folk are here today, uh, they are emotionally paralyzed. Uh, and some folk today are mentally paralyzed. Uh, some are few in here today are even financially paralyzed. Some of us come from family situations that are paralyzed and we need God today to help us to walk out of it. Saints, all of us here today 
have some paralysis uh, in an area of our lives uh, that we want God to empower us uh, to walk out of. Uh, can I give you three points and we'll shout our way out of here? But the first thing you got to know uh, that if you're in a situation that has you paralyzed today and you want to walk out of it, uh, the first thing you got to do uh, is you have to experience Jesus for yourself. Uh, since all of us in here uh, have heard some stories about Jesus, uh, but I come to tell you hearing a story about Jesus uh, is not enough. Uh, I know some of us have been inspired by Jesus, uh, but I come to tell you uh, that inspiration uh, without experience is not enough. Uh, you need to experience Jesus for yourself. Uh, you need to know God's power for yourself uh, and I don't care how much you heard uh, your father teach about Jesus uh, I don't care what your mama taught you about Jesus uh, I don't care how many sermons uh, you've heard a preacher uh, preach or teach about Jesus uh, when you have to step out uh, and meet life on your own uh, information uh, and inspiration uh, won't be enough to get you through uh, you need your own experience with the Lord. How many had a mama or a grandmama told you, baby, you got to know him for yourself. Oh, some of us have lived long enough to experience Jesus. I wish you helped me in here. How many know some of us have lived long enough to know that he answers prayers. I said some of us have experienced the Lord and we know that he's a burden bearer. So a few of us know that he's the person uh, that can make a way out of no way. Uh, have you ever experienced him? Uh, if you ever have, uh, Donnie, you know he's a friend uh, that sticks closer than any brother. Uh, if you've ever experienced the Lord, uh, you know he'll come by in the midnight hour uh, and dry tears from your eyes uh, and heal your broken heart. Uh, some of us have been here long enough uh, because we've lived long enough to receive confirmation uh, of our information. Uh, we can give God some glory and I just stopped to tell you today if you and I are going to be successful in walking out of whatever it is this morning we need the experience of Jesus lifting healing and delivering power and we have to experience it for ourselves but secondly if you are going to be walk out of whatever has you paralyzed today not only do you have to experience Jesus for yourself, you got to learn how to bring all your problems to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, saints, uh, this paralytic and these four of his friends uh, heard that Jesus was back in Capernaum uh, and they heard that Jesus uh, was a miracle worker. So they resolved in themselves uh, that they were going uh, to get their friend to Jesus. And listen, somebody, I believe in the holistic approach to life, but I want you to know this. Even if your issues are clinical, you still need Jesus. Is this microphone on? I don't care if your issues are financial, you still need Jesus. I don't care whether or not your problems are medical. How many know today you still need to make your way to Jesus? Since these brothers carried their friend and made their way to Jesus. But when they got where Jesus was, they could not get to Jesus because there were a lot of people in the way. Ah, uh, saints, I come to tell you, never let people stop you from getting to Jesus. Is this microphone on? Miss Shirley, never let people stop you from getting to the Lord. Uh, there were a lot of people in the way. And so even though uh, they were in the way, uh, these brothers, uh, uh, they had to resort to some unconventional means. Uh, see, saints, in antiquity, uh, 
houses only had one door it was in the front of the house there were no side doors nor were there any back doors and when this group arrived carrying their friend there were so many people in the house and so many people blocking the doorway that they climbed on the roof and listen somebody just because you can't get in doesn't mean you can't get over do me a favor tell your neighbor say neighbor when you can't get in and you can't get through get over it listen somebody when the normal way is cut off how many know God will provide another way for you and for me oh I'm preaching better than y'all acting I come to tell you this is some black folk in the scripture y'all know any black people because when they couldn't get in or get through uh, they climbed up on the roof uh, and dug a hole in the roof uh, and it wasn't even their house uh, uh, saints listen uh, in ancient Capernaum uh, roofs were nothing but hard mud uh, so all these men needed need uh, was a sharp a stick uh, or a sharp object uh, in order to make a hole in the roof uh, saints the Bible doesn't say uh, what these brothers used to create the hole uh, but it does say uh, they made a hole in the roof and they broke through. Simply put, they tore the roof up so they could get to their friend. Saints, listen. Sometimes you gotta tear some stuff up in order to get to Jesus. Um, these brothers, uh, you can see them, can't you? They are on the top of somebody else's roof and they're pounding trying to make a hole in it. And the people inside in Jesus had to say what in the world is all of that noise ah uh, saints uh, I don't care if where you're sitting right now uh, is, is the quiet section uh, sometimes you gotta holler sometimes you gotta tear up some stuff sometimes you gotta act a little crazy in order to get Jesus' attention and for those of you uh, uh, who are in trouble right now uh, and you sitting beside somebody uh, who is quiet and dignified and demure I would give them a warning I would tell them listen if I were you this morning I'd move over if I were you this morning I'd cover my ears if I were you this morning I'd just get up and move on to the quiet section because I'm going through something right now and when I get happy you might just catch an elbow when I get up and start running I might step on one of them corns on your feet hey say listen because this morning I'm prepared to make some noise this morning I'm prepared to run over whatever and whoever I have to in order to get to Jesus can I preach a few minutes saints don't you ever let property that can be replaced stop you from getting to Jesus and I'm going to tell you this and move on don't you let what folk got to say or what they think about your worship stop stop you from getting your breakthrough uh, sometimes uh, in order to get to Jesus uh, you gotta go against the grain uh, Stephanie sometimes in order to get to Jesus uh, you gotta break some rules of social etiquette uh, sometimes you gotta do whatever it takes uh, and ask folk to forgive you later on uh, saints when you're trying to get to Jesus uh, you can't act like y'all acting like now uh, you can't be cool uh, you can't be cute uh, you can't be sophisticated sophisticated answer did he sometimes you gotta get downright undignified is there anybody besides me and these four brothers ever ended up tearing up some stuff trying to get to Jesus is there anybody besides me and King David ever had to get undignified and go on and praise the Lord until it brought you through y'all can get happy I'm almost done but saints I come to tell you if you want to walk out of your situation uh, and make your way to Jesus, uh, even, if, even if you got to tear up some stuff, uh, I tell you the first thing you got to do uh, is you got to have an experience uh, with Jesus for yourself. Uh, after you have an experience with Jesus with yourself, uh, you got 
to learn how to bring all your problems to the Lord. But I come to tell you that after you learn uh, to experience Jesus, uh, bring all your problems to the Lord. Uh, the final thing I want to tell you uh, is the Lord, uh, after your healing and your breakthrough, uh, will shut up all of your critics. Yes, Saints, this brother in the text, uh, like the rest of us, has a history. Uh, this man was paralytic, uh, so he could not do for himself. Uh, Saints, this paralyzed man uh, was in constant need of help, uh, and he probably was poor. And Saints, I don't care what your situation uh, or your condition is this morning. Uh, you have some critics. Uh, you have some naysayers. Uh, everybody don't like you. Uh, you got some haters. Uh, you got some negative prognosticators uh, who are trying to predict your future. Uh, I told you these was black folk in the scripture uh, and churchy black folk had that. Uh, go on preach out for talent. Uh, so you know when these brothers uh, start tearing up somebody else's roof uh, and had the nerve to lower this brother down uh, in the midst of the people. Uh, you know the naysayers and critics were saying uh, it don't take all that. Uh, now listen, uh, in ancient Capernaum, uh, the largest home could, could, could contain uh, uh, about 50 people if they stood close together. And I already told you uh, that the roots back then were made out of hard mud. So when these men started digging uh, and pounding on the roof, uh, it would have not only uh, made some noise, uh, but it would have caused lumps and clumps of mud and dirt uh, to fall on the head of those on the inside, uh, including Jesus. Uh, and, and, and you know uh, that those on the inside uh, they started complaining uh, uh, but while the critics were complaining uh, I want you to look at the scripture Jesus is applauding uh, don't take my word for it uh, while the critics were mad uh, Jesus was thrilled uh, since the Bible says uh, Jesus did not see their vandalism uh, or uncouth behavior uh, but he saw their faith uh, Mark says uh, that when Jesus saw their faith uh, one of the things Jesus granted uh, this paralyzed man was healing. Uh, uh, saints faith uh, always gets God's attention. Uh, and saints the Bible says uh, that when they lowered the man down uh, in the presence of Jesus uh, that Jesus saw five optics uh, moving on one belief. Uh, they all had faith uh, and Jesus saw it. Uh, but before Jesus healed the man uh, uh, the scribes uh, uh, those who knew the law the scribes those who could draft legal documents and contracts the scribes those who were the legal experts got offended at something Jesus said saints during antiquity every town every hamlet every village had at least one scribe and many of the scribes were also Pharisees but saints during the healing story instead of Jesus just telling in the hill, uh, the paralyzed man, uh, my brother, you are healed. Uh, Jesus says something controversial. Uh, Jesus looked at the man and says, Son, uh, your sins are forgiven. Uh, and the Bible says uh, there were some scribes in attendance uh, contemplating to themselves uh, how Jesus, a man and a preacher, uh, could speak to another man's sin. Uh, and some of you here are asking, uh, Preacher, uh, what did this man's paralysis? Uh, par Paralysis uh, have to do with sin. Uh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, Saint Jesus here uh, is not saying uh, that sin caused this man's paralysis. Uh, Jesus here is addressing uh, this paralyzed man's greatest need, uh, which is the forgiveness of sin. Uh, Saint's forgiveness uh, is the greatest miracle uh, Jesus has ever performed. Uh, Saints in this story, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, this man came to Jesus. Uh, for a healing uh, but Jesus gave him salvation uh, and healing uh, his friends brought this man uh, to be healed uh, but Jesus gave him more than he asked for uh, is there anybody here besides me and this brother uh, who ever came to Jesus for one thing uh, and you left Jesus uh, with more than you asked him for uh, uh, saints uh, uh, the scribes were mad uh, at what Jesus said uh, they didn't say anything but the Bible says our omniscient Savior knew what they were 
you're thinking. And saints, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad today that I serve a God who always knows what my haters are thinking. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I serve a God who always knows what my enemies are planning. Listen, somebody, you can't see it, but God knows what your opposition is thinking. And saints, if you're going to walk up out of your current situation, you're going to need a Savior that can silence your haters. Saints, if you keep on living, you will go through some tough and some difficult times. In fact, some folk here are going through a tough time right now. And listen, saints, and that's why the songwriter declared, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure your anchor holds unto the solid rock. And saints, can I tell you uh, who the solid rock is? Uh, our rock uh, is the lily of the valley. Uh, our rock uh, is the bright and morning star. Uh, our rock uh, is a way out of nowhere. Uh, and he's helping the midnight hour. Uh, Saint Jesus heard uh, what the haters were thinking. Uh, so he silenced all of the critics. Uh, Jesus raised the question to the scribes. Uh, he said, what well, is better to say? Uh, arise and walk. Or to tell this man your sins are forgiven. Jesus said to the scribes, I said what I said, that you all will know that the Son of Man not only has the power to heal, but I also have the power on earth to forgive sins. Uh, saints, it's time for me to sit down. But listen, somebody, the Lord can handle your sin and he can handle your sin circumstance uh, and he will make your critics uh, shut up. Uh, Jesus uh, made the scribes shut up. Uh, I already told you uh, the scribes, uh, Miss Shirley are the ancient historians. Uh, the scribes uh, are the ones who wrote down the history. Uh, the scribes uh, told people about what already happened. Uh, the scribes uh, wanted things, uh, people to know the past, uh, but the scribes uh, didn't know nothing nothing about uh, what God was about to do. Uh, saints just like every town uh, and every village uh, had at least one scribe. Uh, every church today uh, has at least one scribe. Uh, look up and down your row. Uh, look in front of you and behind you. Uh, there's some scribes on your section. Uh, I want you to see if you can find out uh, who they really are. Uh, uh, saints, listen, uh, the scribes are the one uh, who, who knew uh, everything about yesterday the scribes know history but they do not know the future God has planned for you and for me since the scribes are the one who like to tell folk about the mistakes and the pain that you and I have from our past but they have no idea what the Lord is getting ready to do in our lives because since the Lord and only the Lord is the author of your story. I said the Lord and only the Lord is the editor of your outcome. See saints scribes only record the story but the editor is the one that determines the final content of your story. Saints after Jesus said your sins are forgiven. Jesus said arise pick up your bed and walk and I'm going to quit right here but sons don't miss this I came here to tell you this one thing don't miss this this man he went in one way but I come to tell you Miss Marsha Mr. Marsha he gonna walk out another way do me a favor tell your neighbor say neighbor you may know my history yes it's true there's been some times I needed some assistance Yes, it's true. There's been some times when I've been down and out. Yes, it's true. There were some seasons in my life where I was barely making it. Yes, it's true. I used to be 
was lame and I needed help. But let me tell you what happened. While I was down, while I was hurting, while I was crippled by life, I made my way to Jesus. And now because of him, I'm able to walk up out of it. Is there anybody here who can testify that Jesus will help you walk out of some stuff? Somebody today can testify. He helped me walk out of an abusive marriage. He helped me walk out of an addiction to drugs and alcohol. He helped me walk out of sickness and pain. He helped me walk out of poverty and the projects. He helped me walk out when my job was driving me crazy. He helped me walk out of, of, the, of the prison of mental and emotional anxiety and depression. How many know today that your story is not over yet since this young man was carried in but he left out walking in the presence of all the people. Do me one more favor. I'm looking right at you. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor when the Lord gets through with me I'm walking out of this thing. Tell him when the Lord lays his hands on my circumstances. I'm walking out of this. Uh, saints, this man walked out. He walked out in front of the scribes and all of his haters. And listen, somebody, when the Lord brings you out, he will cause the same folk who tried to block you to watch you receive your miracles. He'll make the same people who tried to block you watch him answer your prayer. The same people that said you weren't going to make it. The same people who said you're never coming back. The same people who said you weren't coming out. The Lord is going to make them watch you in your breakthrough. I'm going to testify and take my seat. But I know what it feels like to be, to, to be in something that has you trapped and has you paralyzed. But can I testify and tell you this? I came to Jesus just as I was weary, wounded, and sad. But home I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I say he has made me glad. I found in him a resting place and he has. Somebody say he has. He has. I feel like preaching today. I come to tell you he has made me glad. If you know you serve a savior today that can help you walk up out of it. Come on help me close this thing. Ain't he good? Ain't he great? Ain't he alright? Now put your hands together and give the Lord Do me a favor, tell your neighbor you can walk out of it. Come on, lift your voice, tell your neighbor you can walk out of it. Yes, sir. We thank God for preaching. Y'all come on. spirit to lead us today so can we get away from our format that we use every Sunday and do something a little different these are two of the finest people I've met in 36 years of ministry you know some people you meet you're just close to them when you meet them 
I love everything about them other than the fact that they Cincinnati Bengal fans. I'm going to deliver that spirit off a few of y'all before I leave here. Seriously, so this family has gone through a midnight experience. But I want you to know that they're on the other side now of that midnight experience. When Jesus says to his disciples, come, let's go to the other side. I want you to know before they got to the other side, they had to go through a storm. But listen, somebody, you on the other side of your storm now, heading to your miracle. Can we just continue to pray right now? Eternal God and Father, we thank you for these wonderful people. We don't always know, God, why you do what you do. But we declare you do it well. Sometimes God is hard for us to see that how what you're doing is working out for our good. But we know God if we live long enough we have to testify of your goodness and your grace. God we call them out today because there are other parents who are worried about the children. And so today you have created them to be walking and talking billboards of your goodness and your grace. They can say to people, look at us. We didn't know what was going to happen. But we cried unto the Lord. And he heard our cry. And he moved on our behalf. So we thank you for the miracle of the restoring process of their son. But somebody else is worried about a son or a daughter. Somebody else is worried about a grandchild right now. Somebody else is worried about a niece or nephew. Somebody else is worried about a loved one right now, God. And God, we ask you to move even if that person who needs to be delivered doesn't even know that you're moving on their life right now. You can do it, God. If you can't do it, we declare it cannot be done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. Can y'all sing something while I go down here and hug my people?
couple people want to know where Fran is today. I promise you she ain't leaving. She went, she went home to check on her mama. If you got a mama, did you hear, is this mic on? If you have your mother still in the land of the living, go check on her. It's a privilege, a blessing to have a mother. I, I, I know, I, I'm just telling y'all, I know, I know y'all don't like when I say that. Ain't nobody else that can cuss you out and make you feel special at the same time but your mama. It's a blessing to have a mother. And you know they ain't gonna never let you be grown. I don't care if you 70 and she 90, she not gonna let you be grown. Just do what I used to do with mine. In the middle of while she was talking, Nate, I'd get up and kiss her on the cheek. Go get in my car and go to my house. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't stay away from my mom when she made me mad because she taught me something that I never forgot. We were not allowed, and me and my sisters do it today. We don't get off the phone without saying "I love you." My mother said one day we're gonna tell each other we love each other, and that's gonna be the last time. And the day she closed her eyes, that's the first thing that I remember. So if you got a mother that's still alive, call her up. I don't care if she got on your nerves this week. I don't care if she was talking about you with your other siblings. You know, you know mothers, y'all two-faced too. Y'all know that, right? Sometimes y'all be talking about people and you, be, and you forget who you're talking to, you be talking about us to us. But we still love you. And we thank God for you. If nobody else tells you this week they love you, let Alphonse Allen Jr. tell you how much I love you. I'm old enough to understand now that you got to learn to love some folk and you can't love them and they can't do nothing about it. Let me say this before we go. Somebody has an enemy that's giving you the blues. The Lord has put it on my heart to tell you, when you learn to love that enemy, God is gonna release the blessing he has stored up for your life. You don't believe me? I want you to read the 38th chapter of Job when you get home. God's going to release everything he has had stored for you as soon as you learn to love that person who has presented themselves unlovable in your life. Alan Temple, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore. And all the people of God said it so the Lord could hear him. They shouted and said, Amen. Amen.